All right, phase two of my project to get these. We put the footers in, made some videos of that. And then <clears throat> today we put the headers up. So because we didn't do this in the right order and mount the headers before all of this went on and then just build that this all with the shop. Hey, stop licking me, dog. Um, in order to find the... Uh, <clears throat> well, in this case, the roof trusses, um, because that is mounted above the ceiling in there. So it's actually truss space. Um, I had to crawl up into the attic and, uh, there is actually, um, <clears throat> OSB board behind this paneling. So I thought I'd just be able to look at these staples and thinking they were going into the studs and the trusses but they were not because they're just randomly put in place because there's OSB behind this. So we went in and luckily we could go through the attic and uh, I just drilled, uh, next to each truss, I drilled a screw through so it poked out right against the truss. And then we drew, I was able to measure, you can see where I measured the, the truss line right there so the screw hole would be like on the left edge or the right edge and then the truss was an inch and a half wide and then i went across on a ladder and measured to each of those truss centers and then they had these boards laid out on the ground and i called out the measurements with the measuring tape and they had a measuring tape below and we just marked all the joists before that we marked all the headers. So joist line, and then the line with the H that you see from time to time there is the um, rafter. I put header, but it's the, the rafter coming off that'll be sitting on these poles. So I then drilled all the holes while those were laying on the ground, and we cinched that up into place with three heavy duty screws. Um, and then the top and bottom holes are going to be half inch, half inch bolts that are about eight inches long, nine inches long that will, I already drilled a few of them, but I'll go back through and drill them. And so they're perfect. Everything's dead on, on the rafters in there, the trusses, sorry. And then we'll cinch those big lag bolts with, uh, um, let me show you those bolts. <clears throat> these are the screws we used i wish they'd been longer another inch or two longer but they cinched it up real nice and tight um t30 heads on there for uh for these guys the t30 bit and uh, they just cinched that board up really tight and were self-drilling, you can see. And so it was really nice. Um, but we pre-drilled the hole through the board and then the bolts. We've got washers, the big washer, and then a half inch bolt that is actually, oh, I thought they were nine inches long. They're just six inches long, you can see there. So about that much of it will be about an inch and a half will be the uh, header board and then about five eighths or so of OSB behind it. It's a thick OSB board. Maybe it's a half inch and the rest will be drilled into the, uh, the house the truss. So. <clears throat> So luckily I built an access port to the attic and put in actually flooring so we could store boxes and stuff up in there. And then all of these materials I had delivered, I went down and order them. This is all the, you can see the six by six posts in there. There's three of them. Um, and then all the, the rafters, a couple of headers that will bolt onto the posts and then two by fours to create um, purlins across every two feet. 
and then we're gonna mount the the metal roofing to that so anyway once we get that going i'll film that point okay so we finished setting these bolts we drilled into the wall with three eighths inch drill bit so that the half inch bolts would have something to grab hold of and we did 20 of those all the way across and then I just put this plate on the seam even though I didn't really need it I just did it so and then we put the end truss on oh we stood these guys up first <clears throat> This is the first thing we did. We just stood them up into place and used the uh, <clears throat> post level. So it gives you the level in the both directions. And got them pretty close. And then I just threw four simple three inch screws in the bases on each side just to keep them in place. Then we pre-drilled the holes for these headers or whatever you call them. And I'm gonna come back in and put some more, but these are big heavy duty lag bolts or lag screws. I'm gonna put some more in, and then I'm gonna put some pieces in between and reinforce it a little bit. Some blocks in between with screws. Um, you don't need them on each side because these aren't sitting on the inside board. Um, but we got them up into place and um, <clears throat> then we did the other side so that this unit with the two boards was just standing in place. And then we got the angle right, cut that, set it on there, hung it. Then we did another one on this end and measured the distance between the two distance between the two and I kind of set a square on on it coming off the house I set a square in there and so we kind of got it just about right then we put some measurements on the top board here just to verify that it so just a combination of things we think it's all lined out and now we're just going through and mounting these boards and setting them in the marks and it should be all lined out just right so, and then I am going to put, there. there's different kind of ties you can use. I just bought these simple hurricane ties and I'm going to use those. So. And then I'll probably come through and put something stronger through the base, either a bolt with a nut on the other side or just two big thick half inch, half inch lag screws. But... And then we're gonna come back through and with two by fours, put every two feet, put a strip of two by four across as purlins. And then the sheet metal will lay on top in three foot strips, the full length, and we'll screw them into the purlins, the two by fours that are in rows across here every two feet. And then it should be all covered in. So, so that'll give me a nice 12 foot extension on the inside. And then I'm hoping, I, I ordered the sheet metal, but I haven't checked to see if it, can, if it got ordered or not for sure. I'm kind of hoping they didn't because I ordered it at 14 feet, which means I'd have to cut off two feet of this overhang. But I kind of like the long overhang. And so if they haven't, I'm going to order 16 foot lengths of sheet metal, I think. So Anyway, it's coming together pretty nice. All right. She's all put together for the most part. I just need to put the purlins on. But I need to go and find out if they ordered 14 or 16 foot metal sheets. I like this extra overhang, so I'm hoping they didn't order them yet. Otherwise I have to cut off two feet here, which is no big deal. But we had to rig up the corners there with some creativity. 
and then I drove in some heavier lag screws on the outside edge. And I might do something else where I tie those two together with a brace, which I'm, I'm certain I'll do that now that I said it out loud. So. But everything's in. We had to get creative on this corner too, only this one allowed me to put a little angle brace underneath and I'm really confident in that, the solidity of that, so that corner. And then as bad luck would have it, this run of board, which we did not cut short, was an inch and a half shy. And I wanted this, this to sit right on the end. And so I had to rig up a, an end piece and I might do something on the other end to match it. I don't know. I'm not overly concerned. This wasn't a, a super professional job. It's the first time I ever built one of these, so. But it turned out pretty good. Um, we'll get the metal roofing on. And then we'll get the purlins on and the metal roofing. I'm I'm a little nervous because it appears to be a slight slope across the top. Not the top header, but these bottom ones. And I knew with the level it wasn't exactly right. And I didn't want to get into trimming these heads. And I wish now that I'd gone back and made absolutely 100% sure that that was 100% level. I think it's off by like a quarter or half inch in the whole run, which I don't think will mess with anything, but I'm a little nervous about it, so. Anyway, this is gonna be really good extra space for me. 12 feet wide underneath. Um, I did create more space between these two like an extra foot than these two because at the last minute when i was digging these holes i was like i don't want the <laughs> the post right in front of the window and now i i think it probably didn't matter and i could have moved it over and just made these all equally distanced apart but i think it turned out good for a first time on this type of project so we'll see once we get the roofing on All right, we're almost done with the purlins. We've got a few more to do up top, but I cut off the last two feet here of the overhang, which was a disappointment, but I had already pre-ordered the 14 foot metal and it came in before I could change it to 16 so I could have that long overhang. There was, there were some people that said you shouldn't have a four foot overhang anyway. and I. I think I agree. So I had showed you before, I put these hurricane ties on the outside, but because I didn't, I don't know if they call it dovetailing, but you notch on each of those boards so it sits flat all the way across whatever width of beam you have, whether you're doing two boards like this or a, a solid beam. And so I went and bought these really stronger hurricane ties, Simpson strong ties for the inside, and I added those as well. I think that just gives it that extra stability in there. And then I am gonna come back in and put some brace pieces here, screw them in here, and then screw them to these to add strength there, and then probably do at least one in the middle on each of these, just to tie it all together. There won't be a whole lot of weight on it. So I'm not overly concerned with these purlins and then just the sheet metal on there. But the slope isn't isn't too it's not exactly ideal for wyoming winter we have about three feet of snow for a good four or five months and with the metal it should just shed off there pretty nice but i was a little nervous about accumulated weight so these purlins will be nice and the sheet metal will just lay on top of and affix to the purlins I think it's coming together real nice it's been pretty slick i did i went and after reading and reading online i bought i would have liked three inch but the only ring shank came in two and three eighths um 
<clears throat> but with that ring shank, it's giving it, it's got a plastic or gluish coating that they said will melt when you fire it and also adhere. And then it has these ring shanks in there that really should grip it almost like a screw, but at the same time, give it some flex in case you have anything going on. I read one guy that throws one screw and two nails in, and I might go back through and do that. Um, I'm a little nervous about warping wood and all that stuff, but, or wind coming in and catching it and lifting it. Um, my brother is construction, so he doesn't even use ring shank. They just use smooth shank for purlins, but I don't know. Seems like there's one more thing I was gonna show you, but I don't remember what that was. Anyway. Coming together nice. Okay, aerial view of the purlins. They're all on. I had to get the sawzall and notch out the deal over there. But I think everything's good. It's laid out pretty nice. I did them every two feet. So I think that'll be good. It's, uh, pretty evening sky here in Star Valley, Wyoming. Got a little tricky trying to do the last part by myself. But got to throw a few nails in the edge and then we're ready for metal, which came today. It was delivered down there next to the truck. Okay, so purlins are done. You can see the side view there, how it angles up to the house. Yeah, it's not like super professional, fancy custom look, but it's gonna give me a 12 foot by 18 and a half foot covered space to keep stuff out of the winter, mostly this stuff this year. And the side by side with the plow on it, so I can just pull it out and start plowing. Um, I ordered all the stuff I'll need to do a drip edge to do the cap over the sides on the side rails and to do what some type of I don't know what it looks like but some type of thing I'll screw into the shop and it'll come over the top to shed water out and then the metal will slide up underneath it I'm guessing it's gonna be some type of cap that screws in and the metal will sit inside that cap to keep water away from the not a huge deal if water does come down because it's going to be open and gravel. So. And then seven three foot wide by 14 sheets of red. So. Should look nice. It's coming along. Okay, we got the first two rows up. I'm just putting one screw in um, each of the, the gaps. I put two on that, because that's the, where the ridge line is. And I just elected to not put um, mastic tape in there, since this is just an open area anyway. Snow and rain will blow in a bit from the sides anyway. And anyway, so I'm just taking the longer piece with the little ridge. I'm setting a screw there and then a screw there. Just like right there. And so I don't think it's water. I don't see any water coming up. I did go put on that edge piece, the drip edge that comes up over the top and just screwed it in down up there. And then I have a, pe I have a flashing there that I'll since we did this after the fact, I couldn't slip it under the siding, so which would be ideal, and then have it coming out. 
So I'm gonna glue it to there and then throw some screws in and just have it sitting on top to keep water out of there. So hopefully that'll go. I was gonna do it as I went along, but now I think I'm gonna get these on and then come up and put that one on so that anyway I'll just put my weight on the purlins and I think it'll be all right and then I'm gonna come back and I'm doing the drip edge a little bit backwards I'm gonna slip it in and then put my final screw in from the top to hold the drip edge and the, the very end of this and as planned I hung this over just like a a little bit like a half inch or so so anyway it's looking good see from the bottom <laughs> trying to film and climb down a ladder at the same time So these metal shears um, are perfect. They're just cutting really nice lines um, for all this siding. So it's been pretty slick with these guys. So that's good here. So these shears are pretty slick. They just cut cutting really nice lines. This is gonna slip under the other one so it doesn't have to be perfect, but it's cutting just very cleanly. So everything that gets cut will be covered by another line, so it doesn't have to be perfect, but still looks really nice. All right, so we're got it all done. Got the drip edge on, um, or that cap, the end cap. You can see how I threw that on there. And then I threw the drip edge on there. I just tucked it under, and then I threw the last screw at the end of the sheeting in so that it held the drip edge and the, the end. So. I didn't use any mastic tape on my overlaps, as I told you earlier. I just don't really care if a little bit of water gets in here, and I don't think any will get in anyway. Um, so you can see it from up above. I do need to take the flange and place it against the shop there at the top. I'm gonna glue it on and then um, screw it into the wall and then it'll sit like that and it'll it'll hang over the first five inches or so that's down there one thing i didn't notice is and didn't know how to accommodate for is my last ridge line was too far from the edge to use that cap it only goes over about two inches, so it would just hit right on the ridge top. And I couldn't figure out what to do there. So, I think I'm going to just order more drip edge and run drip edge up there with some mastic tape to seal it and throw some. Probably do mastic tape and a line of silla, silicone, under a bead of it underneath, so. I don't think it'll hurt anything. So, and I think it'll be a clean look and it's out here on the back of the shop. So I think it'll be a good way of doing it. You can see underneath here, my purlins, two by four purlins. I did climb back up. I had been shooting two of those uh, ring shank nails, but they're only two and three eighths. And I was a little nervous about having warping and twisting with the heat. And so I went in and took a three inch long screw and drilled it into the middle um, in between the two nails, just one per contact point. 
wherever the purlin hits the 2x8, I threw one screw in. Um, and just figuring that would give me some rigidity to it and hopefully keep any warping down that it might want to do. But I read some professional guys do that anyway. They'll use ring shank just to keep it going fast and they'll throw one screw in. Um, not everybody, but I read a couple of guys say that's what they do. So. so, anyway, I think it looks really sharp for a home project and gives me a ton of extra space. It's 12 by 18 and a half feet, just about. So.